This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Jack Threads. Now, Shannon, before we check port 995 or 993 for SSL uh, IMAP, uh, I figured that I would mention, since you were talking about um, Code Academy, yes. LearnPython.org is kind of a similar experience, except it's Learning Python, which cool. is a great programming language for beginners. Uh, it's not going to award you badges, and it doesn't have all the social sharing functions. Oh, but I like those. And it's a little bit rougher around the edges, but here's the thing. If you go through yours, you're going to have a basic understanding of like the way syntax works and right. things of that nature. Yeah. And you definitely should, because it's like learning to speak uh, a foreign language. The mm -hmm. more languages you learn, the easier it is to, to learn many more. And uh, you don't want to yeah. get stuck where like every all you know yeah, is we'll JavaScript you, uh, and everything Barcati looks Mashta. like a web page. Yeah. I understand. So um, what I uh, just wanted to point out down here is like the way that it works is you'll get your tutorial up at the top and then there's these code windows at the bottom and it'll give you a, a, a challenge like you're supposed to make this say hello world and it says goodbye world. So you, ju you just change that to a hello, you hit run, and then ah, you can move yes. on to the next chapter. Cool. And like in this one you have to like set some variables. Uh, I think you're supposed to say like my string um, equals hello. You're supposed to say um, my float. You're supposed to make sure that it ends up equaling 10, so 10.0, or you could put it within float thingy. Mm -hmm. it, it explains how those works, and then you know you continue on. And you, if you run it and it doesn't compile, you get an error. It's, yeah. So it's not okay, as sexy. Okay, so it's it's similar to the one that I'm doing because it'll give me a reference error if I if I forget to put quotes around something. Right. And I gotta say, I don't think any of these are a substitute for a good book. But right. as far as like lowering the level of like intimidation and just yeah, kind of exactly. like breaking that ice, so that you're like, oh, this isn't scary at all. Because once yeah. you learn a couple of commands and a couple of functions and whatnot, you start like you can start recognizing the code, and you're like, oh, I know what that is. Here's the thing: I don't actually know Python that well, uh, but I can fake it. Like for example, this code right here that was sent in <laughs> uh, from a fan who. Uh, Send us this Python script. You want to? This is actually Jesus's that is related to ah, the email. Ah, okay. Well, so I'll let's... go ahead and read the email then. So Jesus wrote, "I really like the USB rubber ducky. I just got it today and have been playing with it all evening slash night. I was fascinated by the Base64 ASCII to binary VB script. I played with your reverse shell payload, but I needed something bigger. So I attempted to do the same thing for Metasploit's Windows reverse TCP interpreter." It took a while for it to completely create the meterpreter.exe and execute it, but it did work. I borrowed some of your reverse shell payloads to make it work. Here's a Python script I created that will allow you to convert any binary file, I just tested it with meterpreter.exe, into a ducky script file including the VB script decoder. Just encode this with your ducky encoder.jar and it should work. Meterpreter.exe was too large of a binary file, but it might prove useful for some other binary files. Some smaller binary files, that is. This is neat Thank stuff. Thank you, Hazy. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking over the code. This is cool. Yeah, and you know, a lot of this is like, oh, like down here I see, you know, for line in the input file, that's saying for each line of it, uh -huh. do line equals line dot replace, and he's got just so quotes replacing... with, yeah. with, so he's got line dot replace this, which is a space that's in quotation similar marks, to but no. Quotation marks. Yeah, I mean, they're all the syntax is looks very similar yeah, across a lot of them, <laughs> except for COBOL. But um, but yeah, I, I'm just imagining. I don't know what line dot replace does, but I can imagine it's replacing on every line mm -hmm. wherever it sees a space with no space. I don't know. Ah. That's that's what I'm saying. Is like you know, I'm I'm not a Python programmer, yeah. but uh, you know, you code enough of these little languages here and there, and, and you you'll start, start picking up yep. stuff, and you're like, eh. so true. And I actually, I'm the kind of guy that can't code without a reference anyway. Oh, you really? Know. Yeah. But, you know, I that's just me. I can't code worth a... Well, we're going to have you doing some awesome Alice scripts and stuff next time we do Alice this. Alice scripts? Yeah, you're going to... Well, you're okay. going down the rabbit hole. Uh-oh. This is... That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm looking forward to those. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take her to <laughs> our site. That'll be fun. Now, stay tuned because we're going to be back with this week's Technologist Photo of the Week and trivia after a quick break. Only suckers pay full price, but if you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hey, wasting all your cash on them, listen up because you can score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day. See, there's a new invite-only shopping club just for guys called Jack Threads, surfing up skates, street, surfwear brands at prices that'll melt your brain. 
and there's usually a waiting list to join, but if you head over to jackthreads.com slash hack5, you're gonna get an instant access to their killer hookups. So go on over now. Oh, and did we mention that it's free to join? That's right, hit up jackthreads.com slash hack5, and you'll instantly start saving without even to leave your house. No fireball in the sky that burns like the lava in Metroid. It'll just be like, boom, savings right there where you are. From time to time, you guys email us your JPEGs of feedback at hack5.org, and we like to look at them. We're all like, ooh, yeah. This is one of those, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's My a very nice picture. My girlfriend's last name was JPEG. What's, this, <laughs> what's the picture? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this is from Gary. And he said, I was recently gifted with a 1932 General Electric, electric Grandfather Clock slash AM radio, possibly the first model of clock radio don't actually know. Beautiful clock. Yeah, dude, I love some antiques. Me too. The cost of the parts to fix it were three times more than the cost to mod it. So here's my variation of your picture frame <laughs> mod. Dude, what, what do you mean to fix it? Beautiful. It looks to me like you fixed it. It looks like it's in great condition. Wow. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh man, that is so awesome. I, I, I've always wanted one of those really big grandfather clocks in my household. I want one of those old timey radios. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah one of the we big, probably turn big one into like a ones. mini ITX. Oh my gosh, that would, that would be, so, be so cool. I like how it's like, you know, you know how I feel, oh, I was going to point at the thing that isn't there anymore. <laughs> anyway, you know what I'm It'll talking about. I feel soon. like, you know, technology is beautiful and it should be showcased. I do too. Yeah, like I the, agree. We're not showcasing it. Paul, what's up with that? Anyway, the set's still in beta. And you can always send in your photos to feedback at hack5.org. All right, let's get some you trivia grandfather going. grandfather clocks. The trivia last week was announced at CES in 2007. This operating system, codenamed Quattro, featured centralized backup, file sharing, and media streaming for home networks. Ooh, ooh, I know. Is it um, a low-powered Linux box that you put in the closet? No! Is it like a cloud service you can get for next to nothing? No! Is it a really bloated <laughs> and expensive Microsoft project that it never took... It might be! Yes, it's Windows, Windows Home, home server. server. Yeah. <laughs> Good on ya. <laughs> this week's question is, this common business-oriented language began its life <laughs> as a specification written by researchers at universities, corporations, and the government in 1959. And you can answer that question over at hack5.org slash trivia for a chance to win some swag. 1959. Yeah. That's 20. That's, oh. That's 20 cool. years after the IBM That was anthem. when my dad was born. Oh, yeah? 1959. Yeah. Hmm. You, want, you want to do the uh, IBM anthem with me now as we close the show? As we no, always do. No, but you know what I can do because I just looked it up. Yes. My high school motto. Yeah. Hail Waynesville High School. So that's the show. Trust your technologists. We'll see you next week. Hack5.org slash follow. Hackshop.com. Download every week. Hey, man, Hack this stuff is important. Hack on the other week. And yeah. Hackshop, we'll where they can find this. stuff and the follow page. Hack5.org slash follow. I'm sure follow. They, they stick around to the end of the show every week just to hear that. Well, I do. Let's change the format. Now, I stick 11. around we'll for the something, bloopers. We'll something great. Yeah. If, if you don't stick around until the end, end of the show, you're missing the bloopers. Yeah, and Skateboard Kid. And Skateboard Kid. All right, until next week, I'm Darren Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Moore, and I'm your not drunk up. Trust your technology. More robots in. <laughs>
Shake to unlock. Throw to unlock. Uh. Odor boat to unlock. BB. Then we'll database. What if it's a database? You know what they say, don't compile after midnight. Isn't that when everybody compiles? Paul's always rendering, rendering, rendering. Bye! <laughs>